Today I thought I would make some Toll House chocolate chip cookies, so let's get started. I already have the oven preheating at 350 Fahrenheit or 175 Celsius. So let's get the cookies mixed together and then we'll put them in the oven. I have all the ingredients set out already, so we'll just put them together. First I want you to cream the butter and sugars, so we'll be putting the butter and the white sugar and the brown sugar together right now. So I have these squares of butter and each of them equals half a cup. So you need one cup for the recipe. So we'll put two of them in. And the butter should be soft. I've had these sitting out for a while. So there we've got our butter. Now we got to start measuring the sugar and the recipe will be in the video description below. And it's always a good idea to do the dry ingredients first because maybe you only have one measuring cup and you want to uh, do the dry ingredients first because the wet ingredients will cause the dry ingredients to stick to the cup and it asks for three quarter cup of white sugar so I'll just quickly measure that out. The scoop that I'm using says it's a half cup. So obviously we won't need a full second scoop. Now I'll just level that out and see what it says. And that's three quarter cup. Just a little bit more. Now I'll level it out again. And that says three quarter cup and we'll pour it into the bowl. Now we need the brown sugar and I need three quarter cup brown sugar as well. I store my brown sugar in the fridge so it stays soft. And there I just spilt some. But that looks like about three quarter cup brown sugar. I just pack it down a little bit, not too much. It could be a little bit more. And that's probably a bit too much. So of course I'm just going to take some of it out. But don't worry, my hands are clean. There we go, I put some of it back. Now we'll just pack it down a little bit. That's about three quarter cup of brown sugar. So we put that in. Now you have to cream the sugar and the butter together. So I use a fork. But if it's easier, you can use your hands, but for this I try to use a fork. And all you want to do is make it as uh, creamy or mixed together as possible. And it seems like this uh, butter did not have enough time to soften. I should have taken it out a little bit sooner. So I'll just quickly use my hands because it's taking a little bit too long using a fork. You just kind of squeeze it together, knead it together. And now that most of it is softened, I can probably try to use the fork again. My hands are quite messy, but that's not a problem. I'll wash them in a second. You just want to take the back part of the fork and kind of mash it around like those mashed potatoes or something. And get it all mashed up in there. And this is what you should have. 
can be mashed a little bit better or creamed a little bit better, but I think that's good enough. Now I'll just quickly take a break and clean up the sugar and wash my hands off. Now the next step is to add vanilla and eggs. So we'll do the eggs first. And that egg for some reason cracked the top off. So I just had to pour it out of the top. That's never happened before. So now we'll add the vanilla and it asks for one teaspoon. So I'll just quickly grab a teaspoon. And here's my vanilla. So we'll just pour one teaspoon of vanilla. I'll do that over the sink so I don't make a mess on the counter. And there we go, we got one teaspoon of vanilla. Just pour that in. Now the next step is to add sifted flour. Now the flour I have is already sifted. So it calls for two and a quarter cups of flour. So I'll get a new measuring cup. So this is a two cup measuring cup. And it's white flour, obviously. So that's about two cups. Pour that in. And then quarter cup. And that's a quarter cup. put the flour away and now we're supposed to add baking soda and that's one teaspoon of baking soda so I'll go grab a dry teaspoon the other one had vanilla so that wouldn't work in here so we'll take baking soda make sure it's baking soda not baking powder otherwise you'll have a problem so here's one teaspoon of baking soda done with that. Now it says to mix together and then add water so first of all we'll mix it together. I do have a stand mixer but in order to save the amount of dishes I will just use a fork and maybe my hands. So now we just add the water and the chocolate chips and then we bake it. So I'll quickly add the water. It asks for half a teaspoon of water so I can still use the vanilla one. You want cold water. And we only need a little bit. And there's half a teaspoon of water. And now we'll add the chocolate chips last. So right now I'll just use my hands and mix it together. It did ask for salt, so I'll add that in a minute. Right now I'm just trying to mix the dough together. Don't worry if some of it spills beside the bowl. It's looking a little bit drier than normal, but did everything the way the recipe asked for. So now that's pretty well mixed. Now let's we'll take this stuff off the counter. The counter is clean, so that's not a big deal. And now I'll just quickly wash my hands and add the salt. Now it says to add a teaspoon of salt. And since both of my teaspoons are wet, I'll take a clean one. And I'll do this again over the sink so I don't make a mess. And there's the teaspoon of salt. Now it says to add the chocolate chips. And it asks for one cup. 
you don't want to put more than it asks for because otherwise you could have a gooey mess. And since this measuring cup only had dry ingredients, I can use it again. And there's about a cup. I'll just quickly put these ingredients away. So now we'll add the chocolate chips. And now we'll just quickly mix together the dough. And again, this probably would have been easier in a stand mixer, but in order to save time in cleaning up, I'll just use my hands to mix it together in a bowl instead of a stand mixer. And that's what you should end up with. A nice thick consistency so the cookies don't run. Now I'll quickly prepare the cookie sheet and then we'll start spooning them onto the sheet. Now normally I would grease the cookie sheet here, but today I decided I was going to use parchment paper. And you just place that on a cookie sheet. And don't worry if it rolls up a bit on you. And now I will take a tablespoon and then ball the cookies, or form the cookies, whatever you prefer to say. And I just take a tablespoon, and this recipe makes about two dozen, not two uh, dozen baker's dozens, but just 24. And I'm going to put about three in each row just in case they spread out a little bit and it is nice and thick so there is something a little bit different about today but sometimes it's a little bit more stickier the batter so I won't talk through this whole process I'll quickly uh, get the cookies ready on the sheet and then I'll put them into the oven now I've got 12 ready to go into the oven and I will be using the same cookie sheet but not the same parchment paper to do the rest of the batter. And it says 8 to 10 minutes in the recipe to bake it at 350 Fahrenheit or 175 Celsius. But I find with my oven that if I put it in an extra 5 minutes or so they come out nice and golden brown at the top and then they are done. Now the residual heat that is left after baking them will finish cooking them completely once you put them on the cooling rack and that will be another thing that I'm going to do right now is put the cooling racks out so that when these cookies come out then I can put them on the cooling rack for about an hour maybe two hours and then put them in a container for storage. So now we'll just quickly put them in the oven. And they're in the oven now so I'll just quickly set the timer I've set it for 10 minutes but I'll come back when the timer goes off and then check if they look like they're done if not like I said an extra five minutes because oven temperatures vary and then we'll see if they're done again and then put them on the cooling rack now I'll take them out of the oven it has been 15 minutes and that's just because of my oven and there they are as you can see and I'll just put them down on the pot holders for about 10 minutes so that the chocolate has a chance to harden and then put them on the cooling rack and that will be the final step now they have cooled off for about 10 minutes on the pan and I put them onto cooling racks and they'll sit there a little bit longer. But as you can see, it's nice and dark on the bottom so that means they're done. 
on the top they're not as dark but that just means that they're going to be chewy chocolate chip cookies and not hard and crispy. Uh, once I finish making the rest of the cookies I will come back and do a taste test and like I said the recipe will be in the video description. Now that the other batch is out and cooling on the pan for 10 minutes I'll just quickly taste test one from the first batch. So here we go. They are nice and soft. As you can see, maybe there's a little bit of chocolate running because they're still warm a little bit. But they definitely do taste good. So yeah, that's the recipe for my Toll House chocolate chip cookies. If you like it, uh, share it with your friends or leave a like and uh, try the recipe for yourself. If you do, maybe post a picture in the comment section below with a link and I'll take a look at it. Subscribe or visit my YouTube channel.